hello and welcome back to another live stream class. Um, if you are watching the replay, I will have timestamps down below where you can um, you can skip the chat. We are going to be chatting for about half an hour, just saying hi, getting all of our paints ready and all of that and just kind of chatting along. So let me know if you're here and in the comments. Um, but if you are watching the replay and you want to skip this, it's totally fine. I'll post... Um, the uh, just the timestamps of when the announcements are, or when I say what the supplies are, um, or when class starts, and you can just click through that for where, whenever you want to start. Um, but yeah, if you're here live, I'm so excited. I always love these. Um, so let me know if you're here, and we'll get to chatting. Um, honestly, I'm so excited for this class. Hi, Colleen. Hello. And Sonia says she's excited about this. Me too. Um, we are trying something a little bit different for this class specifically. Um, I'm going to try, I did it with my patrons and I think it worked well. So I'm going to, after we're done with the live chat, I'm going to take the camera and put it over near my palette. So instead of watching me the whole class, which you don't need to anyways, um, You'll be able to see my palette and what I'm doing with my palette. Um, I know a lot of teachers and artists online do that anyways, and I think it's a good transition for me. Um, so, yeah, so thanks everyone for um, suggesting that last class. Hi, Tanya. Hello from Ontario. Okay, is it Ontario, Canada, or Ontario, like, in LA? Because I always get that mixed up because I grew up thinking, like, you know, the Ontario airport is what was one of the airports that we used. Um, so whenever people think of, whenever somebody says Ontario, I always think of LA area, but most likely it's Canada. <laughs> um, yeah, Canada. Yep. Yeah. So that's just, my brain goes to Southern California. I'm like, nah, it's probably Canada. What's the weather like in Canada? Cause I know it, it finally, we kind of did like this heat spell and then it's like dipping back down again. Um, what's the weather like in Canada? Cause I know we, we often have a lot of um, Canadians, or at least people from Canada, tuning in, which is fun. Hello from Germany. Wow, all the way from Germany. What time is it there? Germany. It's gotta be, like, late, right? Welcome. Yeah, it felt really nice today, so we journeyed out and took the kids to the beach for the first time this year, which I like full-on lathered up the kids with sunscreen because they haven't really been out for a year of quarantine so but hopefully none of them walked away with burnt skin I'm trying to ease into that <laughs> let me know if you guys can hear me I guess I can I can move this closer to me um, until we it's half past midnight. Are you planning on painting with us? It's a late night. Um, it's getting cold, unfortunately. Snow for tomorrow. Oh, man, I miss the snow. So I grew up in Northern California. And it, I, we had snow for the winters. That's like what winter time was. And now I live in San Diego and we never have snow. The snow is not a thing here. <laughs> Um, chili day here in Iowa. I miss chili days. Hello from Minnesota. Hi, Jody. Yeah, I, I like San Diego because it's easier with kids. I can't imagine bundling up, like taking a half an hour just to bundle up kids to walk outside in the snow. Like as a kid, I loved it. But as a parent, it's like, completely different <laughs> uh, Miriam says just watching and probably can't even watch the whole time yes I don't doubt that bed is starting to call but good thing is that all my classes are recorded and all my live classes are recorded and stay on YouTube so you can always watch it later and paint with us then hello from Calgary hello Yes, you can always watch the replay. For any of my free live classes, you can watch the replay. They all go into a playlist. So you can see all the classes that I have in one 
in one playlist. Uh, it's just the live class replay playlist. So it's all handy in one spot. I used to do Facebook Live and people had such a hard time finding the videos and I'm so glad I switched to YouTube because I can just organize it and it's so much easier. Hi Amber. Oh no, you, yes, Amber. Okay, Herb Hubbard. <laughs> I was like reading and reading. So hello. Hi Amber from Colorado. <laughs> hello from Boise, Idaho. My brother lives in Boise. Shout out to Jason. He probably never watches these, but you know. Yeah. I'm excited for this class. I, it's like such an easy... It's easy once you get the hang of it, and it's such a simple concept, and I love the simplicity of it and how it looks and everything, so I'm really excited to share it with everybody. Um, and if you've painted with me for any amount of time, you'll know that I love palette knifing. And this was a very different technique that was used with the palette knife that I've not really done before. Usually it's very, like, kind of abstracty, and this is a little, it's a little less abstract. It's more just, I don't know, it's like chunky paint. Um, so if anybody doesn't have full body, I guess I should have, I should have clarified this in the description, um, but all of the recommended supplies are full body. I only use full body, um, acrylics because they are thicker and I feel like you can do more with it. Um, if you have a thickening agent, I would suggest, yes, use that with your, you know, more fluid acrylics, but, um... Uh, I have to ask, what palette knives are you using for the painting? I have different ones, and some of them I find easier to use than others. I only use metal ones. Um, I have a plastic one that I hate. Um, so this is the one that came, I don't even know what it came in. I think I, when I was a teacher for Grumbacher, yeah, it says Grumbacher on it. Um, when I was a teacher for Grumbacher, um, at, when I worked at Michael's, it came with this. And not that we ever used it in our classes, but this was the only palette knife I had. And it is flexible, but it just, it's not like very flat. So you, it does have like a thick, it's kind of thick. Um, but just the way that it is being used, I don't, I don't know why. So the metal ones, I don't know if you'd be able to actually tell, but it like, it kind of goes to like a little bit more of a point so each each of the edges around here kind of curve up just in the slightest amount so when you when you're like laying on the whatever the paint is I feel like it just comes off really well and when I try to use this a couple times it just didn't do that it didn't do that um so I don't know I'm turning up the gain a little bit so you guys can hear me I am like speaking like not into the mic here let me move it a little bit more um when I'm teaching it'll be over here and I'll be teaching more over there um but I'll just move it for now um what was I saying um yeah so it just didn't it didn't work that way so I don't recommend plastic ones this is the only plastic one I've ever used and I didn't like it Obviously, I, there could be plenty of other plastic ones that are fine. I use the metal ones. So in the description, I have all the supplies that I either use or recommend. All the ones I use are in the description, and then I do have other ones that I recommend. Um, what are we painting? We are painting the... Uh, well, let's see, where is it? I actually don't know where the painting is. Um, it's the Up Balloons, Up Inspired Palette Knife Balloons. Um, but yeah, so in the description, I have all of the supplies that I use and then other ones that I recommend, um, or ones that are like close to what I use, um, specifically the paints are close to what I use. Um, but then, um, these are the ones that I use. So this came in the brush kit that I recommend. And then I have, I did buy a separate, um, kit that has one, another one like this. And then it has like other different sizes and shapes that's really helpful i used th so that one right there was a patreon class for my um for my cobalt's the highest tier and it's all palette knife and so we used for the leaves we used like this bigger one um i just like them better personal preference totally nothing against you if you like the plastic ones if you find something you use use it if it works for you 
I've missed a couple comments. So let me go back and read these. Um, I just got palette knives. Wait, uh, I'll go back. Um, yeah, I just got palette knives for the first time. Can't wait to use them and see how they work. Yeah, they're really fun. I have a lot of pal different palette knife classes, so feel free to roam through my live classes or you can join my Patreon. Um, I have a bunch of classes in there um, that I've also done a palette knife. We actually just finished a palette knife class. Um, it's the, the bike that you see right there. We did the flowers and some of the texture on the ground with a palette knife. So that one was a lot of fun. Um, uh, let's see. Just got markers. I love them. I've always wanted to do markers. I don't know um, what brand. Oh, I don't know how to say that. O-H-U-H-U. Um, but I've always wanted to get, like, the brush markers that, like, blend really well. But I have so many different mediums that I love, so it's hard to branch off. Um, I have metal ones, too, but the form you showed us is kind of frustrating me. The form, the form I showed you, which form? Are you talking about, like, a form of how I do something, or a form, like, a something you fill out? Um, I just bought one in the, uh, in the form, oh, like, the form of, like, the shape, are you talking about? Bob Ross uses, yeah, so, I mean, I'm trying to think of, there's two other ones that comes in the kit, I think they're all rounded tip, though, um, the one that Bob Ross has used has, like, a pointy tip, which I will say is handy for doing, um, essentially anything with an edge like mountains or I mean this does have a have an edge you just have to be careful not to go all the way to the tip and you kind of have to like get you know point it different angle it's definitely it's definitely doable but you do have to be a little bit more careful I, w I would say that for mountains specifically the the type of um palette knife with the bob as bob ross uses is much easier for that which he does does mighty mountains all the time did <laughs> um all the time so i'm not you know that's um it's great to have hello artist loft brushes or brush markers yeah i think right now i'm just i'm getting into digital art right now um, I just did a commission, I don't have a picture of it, but I just did a commission of, um, a mermaid with, here, let me see if I can show it on my phone. I'm, like, really proud of it, so <laughs> I, like, want to show everybody, but I, I haven't posted on, on Instagram or anything yet because I don't want the person who it's for to see it, if that makes sense. Um, so I just finished this, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of blurred out, but, um... It had that she likes purple, which is why her tail is purple, and then she liked Frozen, so I had, like, the Frozen horse, so that was a lot of fun. So I'm getting into digital art, and I'm still trying to figure out watercolor art, because I do like that. So I have a couple different mediums I'm already trying to dive into, so I think trying to dive into um, more mediums right now <laughs> would be a little chaotic, but that being said... I love drawing, so. Um, for anyone asking if the tutorial will be up later, yes, it does. Um, it automatically saves. Um, automatically saves to my YouTube into the playlist for all my live classes, all my live class replays. Um, hello, super excited to join this class. Can we use any size canvas for this painting? Yeah, you can use any size. Um, I will be using an 11 by 14. Um, the original was done on a 9x12. Um, you could do it on a square canvas. Um, honestly, you'll just kind of have to adjust as necessary. So if you have a really long canvas, um, you know, you could put it up high and then you could have more clouds below. If you have a short canvas, like a square canvas, you will need to, um, so if this is your square, you'll need to have a little bit less clouds so you have enough room for... All of the balloons um, so just kind of keep that in mind and try to place where maybe place your 
balloons and house first and then like in your head where it's going to be so that you don't run out of space um, or you could make um, the house and the balloons a little bit smaller so maybe it's further in the distance so it's not taking up you know the entire page um i thought my whole life i'm horrible at watercolors <laughs> until second lockdown last year when i sat down and started to work yeah i think sometimes things just click and i can't tell you how many times i tried to just do things myself and figure it out instead of literally watching the th one of thousand tutorials online free like on Facebook um, I mean on YouTube there's so many resources for learning how to do things it's like take advantage of it I mean you guys are all here you're taking advantage of you know the free content which I think is wonderful and it's it's honestly it's great um, I do that all the time with watercolors um, right now and trying to figure out how to do the drawing program that I'm using um, just different things use the resources you have and get better at the things you like to do um, abstract digital art yeah that's fun I've only done I haven't done digital abstract art I've only done like characters and things like that because um, it's something I'm not necessarily comfortable doing um, in acrylics but um, I've done abstract on canvas a bunch and I like that I think that's why I like using the the palette knife so much is because I've been liking more abstracty things Thank you. Yeah, we got to 3K last um, last class, so like two like two weeks ago. Um, I got to 3,000 subscribers. So thank you for anyone who subscribed. Here's my reminder: um, if you're not subscribed and you like my classes, please subscribe um, and like this video. Like any of the videos that you come across. Um, if you in fact like them, it does help. It helps other people see me, and it helps other people um, find me. Um, and then you'll also, if you subscribe and hit the bell notification, that means, um, you'll get notified from YouTube whenever I either post a video or I go live. So you won't miss, um, the live classes. And that's also one of the things why I like going live early is because then it gives people the reminder. They have 30 minutes to like, oh yeah, I forgot about it. I want to, I still want to do it. So it gives them time to get all their stuff ready. Speaking of stuff getting ready, um, I want to go ahead and get my paints out now because we have about 10, 12 minutes before we start. Um, this is something fun because we get to use literally whatever colors you want. If you want all your balloons to be pink and purple and blue, you can do that. If you want them to be multicolored, you know, all different colors, like the um, essentially like the primary colors and then a couple other colors. Um, primary secondary colors that's fine that's probably what I'll be doing as that's what I did but if you have a specific like if you're doing this for a nursery and the colors of the baby boy's room is gray blue and dark blue do those colors um, you know you can you can really customize this um, I feel like people who do tutorials are so generous on sharing their knowledge for free yeah I mean it's why not you know, I think a lot of artists love sharing their info because they really love what they do. At least that's what I, I like sharing because I love what I do. And I love being able to have the ability to share it because a lot of people are really good at things and don't have the ability to teach or share it in that way. And I think that it's a gift that I can share. So at least for me, that that's how it is. Um, yeah, sometimes you just sit down and try staying calm and don't let yourself become frustrated too fast. Yeah, and then stuff starts to work. Yeah, I think one of this one of my key phrases that I use all of the time is to trust the process and keep going. Trust the process and keep going. When I have even done that with myself where I'm like, this looked ugly. I hate this. I hate every ounce of this, but I'm like, trust the process, just keep going. Because what's the worst gonna happen? I'm gonna get to the end and I don't like it. Okay, so I'll throw it away. Whatever. I'll paint over it. But if you don't trust the process and you can't even get to that point, then you don't know whether or not it's going to be good. So the class that I did for this one was my first class that I ever taught 
um, I ever taught by myself. Like I wasn't looking at any other picture. I mean, I was looking at a, a like a real photo reference, but it was the first one that I was like, you know, teaching from my brain and not from like some uh, like another painting necessarily because I decided that I'm like that's not really ethical and I shouldn't do that um and in the middle of painting that the first time I was like this is ugly it definitely had an ugly stage and I was just like I don't like this but I just kept going and that was the first time I really started using the palette knife and I really liked it and then I ended up loving it and I taught a class on it so trust the process keep going um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to attend. Can I see it later? Yes. All my live classes save to, um, my, my YouTube. Um, sometimes you just need one tip and one tip makes everything click. Yep. Yeah. Um, how much is my Patreon? Patreon. Um, there's different level tiers. Uh, you can join at $5 and you can get quick tips, things like that. If you want to join and have more classes like this um they're not live but they're pre-recorded but you can stop and start it at any time it's essentially like um like having a you know live class that you know you missed essentially but um i'm there and you can ask questions or anything like that um that starts at seven dollars a month um and you can cancel at any time so if you get in there you have a couple classes or you just want to paint that one class um it's monthly yeah so it's monthly um so it's you know if you want to do the classes with us it starts at seven dollars um if you do twelve dollars then um you get a free postcard every month um like a clean postcard from one of my works and um, which is more of just saying thank you um and then there's like a like the highest tier um gets a free um not a free a um private zoom class with me so it's like one-on-one -on -one. Um, well, right now it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's, supposed, it's supposed to be a group, but I only have one person in there. So she gets a, she's been getting pretty much privates for like the last like six months. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's different level tiers for, um, different amounts. Um, the lowest is $5. I'm going to start doing, um, traceables for my live classes in there starting with next week, which, uh, let's see, where is it? So, uh, not next week, sorry, two weeks. Two weeks from now, we are doing, um, it's a day before May the 4th. So, naturally, I had to do something that was Star Wars inspired. And if you have not seen this, how cute is this? Kudos if you can figure out what show or what movie this frog is from. But, um, it's kind of a mix of both of them. But... Star Wars Inspirators. I'm really excited for it. Um, I have a traceable for it. So, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah, if anybody's interested in my Patreon, it's just Patreon um, slash Samantha Anderson Artist. Um, you can go in there and look at what's involved in the tier. I like to think of it as um, if you were going to give a donation tonight for this class, head over on to Patreon and see if you want to join a tier um because you'll get more for your tip if that makes sense like you'll get um you'll get access to literally everything i've ever posted on patreon so if you join at the seven dollar tier you'll get access to every single class that i've taught um up till now and then you'll also get um you will also get access to um picking what we paint for not only some of the live classes but then also patreon classes so it's a little bit more um personal um i watched the speed painting i watched the speed paint of yoda i didn't do a speed painting of yoda did i do a speed painting of yoda i don't think i put that one up i did I did put the, because I usually put them up a week, a weekish, or like the Wednesday before the live class, and I haven't done that one yet, so I don't think I've, I don't think I've put that one up yet, unless I'm going crazy, and I already put it up, um, but yeah, thank you, not for that one, I definitely put up the speed painting for the balloons, um, balloon one, but, 
Anyways, um, I'm getting out my colors. I got completely sidetracked. <laughs> Let's see. What colors did I use? I don't even know. Is it in here? It's so thick. No, I didn't put it in there. Uh, oh, here it is. It's probably stuck to other things because of how much paint is on it. Eh, not as bad as I thought. I need to clean up my... So this is what we're painting. In case you don't know. Yeah, five minutes. Um, I'm excited for it. So this is all textured. Look how fun this is. Yeah, so this is all textured. I'm really excited for it. I have to pick my colors though. That's why I brought it out. Because I want to... I don't know if I want to do the same colors or different colors. Um, but I have three minutes, four minutes to figure that out. <laughs> um, let's see. Is anybody using different colors than what I used in the pictures? Let me know. Oh, and on that case, if you, if you would like to share your art with us tonight... Go to Facebook. You have four minutes. Go to Facebook. Look up Samantha. An look up um, Facebook slash groups slash Samantha Anderson artist. And I have um, a Facebook group where we can just splurge all of the classes that I've done. Um, so if you have, um, yeah, the link was just posted. Um, you can post any. You can share any and all of the classes that um, I've done and whether it's past or present or Patreon, um, anything of that sort. Um, so if you, if you would like to share your artwork with us, um, definitely head on over there. I probably won't, um, unless my husband is on that page, I probably won't accept you because I have to monitor it so that spammers don't get in there, um, but I will probably um, allow you in at the end of class. Let's see, purple. Now I have a super dark purple. I will be lightening this up even more than I did for this one because I think the purple was just a tad bit too dark. I do, I want it a little bit more so I can see it. But this is like really dark. It looks almost black. Um, if it's not like, you know, fanned out. Um, I don't know what colors you use. Let's see, okay. I used essentially primary colors, secondary colors, and a second blue. So I have blue. So, uh, let's see. I'm not using, th am I using thalo blue? I'm going to use thalo blue. So primary colors are thalo blue, yellow, and red. Freaking, ooh find my red. Where's my red? I am extremely low on red. Wow. I need to make an art trip. Actually, I have I have other reds. I just need to get them out. I just haven't got them out yet. So hopefully this will be enough. Um, so you have your primary colors. They, I'm using thalo blue. You can use ultramarine blue or any dark blue. Um, blue, yellow, red. And then you have your uh, secondary colors, which is your green, orange, and purple. And then I'm using a lighter blue that we used for the sky. So there's like two different blues. Um, so that's what I'm using. Again, I'll go over these again when um, the time comes, when I go over the supplies. But for right now, we're going to get started. And yeah, um, for anyone who didn't know, I did mention that um, when we're actually doing the class, um, I will I will move my face camera over to my, um, my palette so that you guys can see me better. Or not see me better, but um, so you can see exactly what I'm doing 
all the time. So, um, all right, here we go. Hi everyone. Welcome to class and welcome for anyone who's just joining us. It is 4 p.m. So I know there are a bunch of people who um, are just gonna be getting in if they haven't already been here. Um, and yeah, we're gonna get started very, very soon. I'm gonna go over all of the supplies for anyone who would like to know. I do have all the supplies listed, but sometimes it's helpful to know exactly what I'm using. Um, um, I have to, yes, it is live. Hello. <laughs> uh, this is what we're painting in case you want to come back and paint it later or paint it now. Um, 7 p.m. for you. Yeah, What? Are, what are, where is everybody at? What are your time zones? Um, it's now 4 p.m. for me. Um, I live on the west coast. 1 a.m. Man, you stuck around this long. <laughs> Goodness. Man, now that I have kids, it's just, I can't, like, I have such a hard time staying up past, like, 11. Unless I'm arting. If I'm doing something artistic, then I'm like, time goes out the window. But, 6, okay. Yeah, I'm probably, in the near future, I will probably change it to 2 p.m. for me, which is so two hours earlier, because our kids are growing up a little bit, and our toddler, or our 20-month-old is now only taking one nap, and so it's a little bit earlier in the day, so it's kind of changing. So we might change it to a couple hours earlier, um, but we'll see. We're still kind of figuring that out. Yes, people from all over, welcome in. All right, well, I'm excited for everyone to be here. We're going to go over supplies real quick, and then I have um, a quick announcement, um, and then we will get to painting. And when we get to painting, that's when I will be moving my um, face camera over to my palette, and you can see everything that I'm doing um, for the whole class. And so that will be helpful. So the first thing is first, we are gonna do supplies. So I am using an 11 by 14 canvas. You can use whatever canvas you would like. Um, just know that if it's a shorter canvas, you're gonna have less clouds or you're gonna have to make your balloon house a little bit smaller um, so that it doesn't take up so much room so that you can fit everything. Um, other key things are some brushes. So we might use other brushes. But these are the main brushes that I'm going to be using. I have two filbert brushes. Um, I have a large filbert brush, and then a size 15, um, at least in the kit that I have, it's a size 15. And then I have a medium sized brush, uh, filbert, which is an 8. So you can use either one of these, um, or both of these, sorry. Um, I'm going to be using this for the background. If you don't have a large filbert, you can just use whatever flat brush you have that's totally fine um, I will say that it is very helpful to have a filbert brush because when you're doing the clouds having that already round um, rounded edge for everything is really really helpful and it just takes less effort if that makes sense um, because everything is already round and so it's just easier so if you have filbert brushes Highly, highly recommend using them. Um, if you don't, you'll just kind of have to go in little, you know, half circles when you're creating um, the clouds, okay? Um, and then the other two ones that I will be using, if you have a liner brush, it's really helpful for all the really thin balloon um, strands. If you don't, that's totally fine. You can just use whatever small brush you have. And then we'll be using the small brush for some of the details on the house. Sorry, my throat is like really dry. <coughs> I'm having trouble like talking and not like um, coughing on myself. Okay. And then the other thing that you will need is a palette knife. If you do not have a palette knife, you can use a very small 
small baby spoon for this specifically. Um, you can use, you can cut up a old credit card or gift card in kind of like a, in like one of these shapes. Um, the, the important thing of this is having that rounded edge, the small rounded edge. Um, sorry, I'm still talking to the camera over here. Um, so having that really small rounded edge right here is what's important. Um, so I would suggest any, honestly, I told someone else this, um, in a comment, I was like, any small round hardish thing that you can use to scrape that paint on. Honestly, you could probably even use your finger if you didn't care. Um, if you didn't care about finger painting, um, and obviously you have something to like wipe off your fingers every time. Um, like you could honestly just get paint and use your finger if you wanted to. Um, I don't recommend it because <laughs> it would be really messy, but if you want to try that, if you don't have the supplies, then you could do that. Um, that's it for the brushes and the palette knives. Obviously I have a cup of water. Um, I forgot to get an extra paper towel. So if you do have an ex if you do have paper towels and things like that, I would grab a couple extra ones because you might need them to, <clears throat> um, wipe off your, um, to wipe off your palette knives. Yes, these are the two palette knives. I will probably only be using this one. I think in my original, I used this one a couple times just because I did have a smaller canvas. So it made more sense to use a smaller, um, to use a smaller one in some of the cases, but, uh, you could probably just get away with using this one. That's probably fine. Um, but these are the two that I will be using. Uh, this actually comes in the, this one comes in the brush kit and both of these come along with some other shapes and sizes come in the, um, the kit, the palette knife kit that I recommend, which is down below. Um, is it normal to get paint on your fingers while painting? Yes. Um, I'm always having to scrub my fingers afterwards. Yeah, sometimes it's less than other times. And then sometimes I literally have paint all over my hands. Um, it depends on the circumstances, but yeah, it's pretty normal. Unless you're like a tidy freak and don't, you know, touch the canvas ever or don't touch your paints ever. But a lot of, a lot of us accidentally touch the canvas and it's wet and you get it all over, but that's normal. Um, okay. Other supplies. I mean, I just, I have my, my easel and my, I will be using a ceramic tile, so I'm not going to be using a, a palette right now. Um, but the palette knife or the palette that I usually use is in the description. It's just a clear flat palette, which I recommend if you do use that, make sure that you rinse it off immediately after done. Don't leave it in the sink. Just make sure you, um, rinse it off as soon as possible. Um, because it, it doesn't come off very well, but I will be using a ceramic towel, which paint literally all, all I have to do is like run water on it and it comes off and it's amazing. Um, I think that is it for the, oh, obviously we need our paint. I'm silly. Pregnant brain. Um, yes, I need, let's see. Okay, let's do this real quick. Sorry, I'm trying to get something up. Um, so, uh, did I talk about paint yet, or is that during the, is that during the other thing? During the chat? Okay, I didn't talk about it. Okay, so paint. Um, for the colors that I will be using, it can be different for you. So. Um, if you would like to use different colors, by all means, do it. Um, if you have, I was saying, if you have a nursery that you're painting this for, um, and the colors of the room are elephant and baby blue, you could do gray, blue, and dark blue, or whatever, you know, whatever that is. Um, if you're doing it for a girl, you could do pink and purple balloons with maybe some yellow in there. Like, you can customize this however you want. If you want it more like the traditional, essentially, you're looking for your primary colors, your secondary colors, and a second blue, um, which we're going to be using for the sky anyways. Um, so that works out fine. 
Um, so the exact colors that I will be using are I have my phthalo blue. I'm using phthalo blue. You could use ultramarine blue too. That's fine. Um, and then my yellow, primary yellow, and then my red. So those are the three primary colors. And then for the other colors, oops, this is the wrong blue. <sighs> um, let's see. And then I have my secondary colors, which is purple. I will be lightening this up with white. Um, so if you have like a lighter purple, then just use that. Um, I only have this dark purple, so I'll be lightening it up so you can see it a little bit better. It looks black on campus if you don't, if it's all clumped together. Um, so I have purple, orange, and I'm using this light green. You could use a darker green if you wanted to, but I, I wanted to have more of the lighter colors in there since I had the dark purples, blues, and reds. Um, I wanted a lighter color. Um, and then other colors that I added um, that I saw in there um, were, I had a second blue so that I have the primary dark blue, but then I have also this lighter blue. And then along with the purple, I also have pink. So you don't have to add it, um, but I thought it added a nice, I don't know, touch. There are pink balloons. Um, I went based off of one of the photos from the movie, so they're, they're, I only used the colors in there um, that I saw, so all the colors that I used in the original were in there. Um, but again, you can customize this any time you want, okay? Or for any, any, any colors you want. Um, I know that that's a lot of colors, but if you need to make any of those colors, that's totally fine. You'll just have to pre-mix. Um, whatever colors you need. So if you don't have purple, go ahead, start now, take your red um, and your blue or your pink and your blue, um, mix some of that together, get a purple that you like, and you, you're going to need a large amount. Um, when I say a large amount, I mean like, like a good amount of paint because it's not like a normal painting where we're going to be spreading it out over the whole canvas each one of these colors is going to be like blobbed on there okay um and you're going to use a lot of it it's going to be very textured um so just try to anticipate that that's why i kind of recommend having all of the colors in tubes that you want rather than trying to mix them all um because you'll probably you you know you might fall behind or whatever um i think because this is a youtube video you can pause it if you need to um, but essentially, we're going to be doing the background, the clouds, and then this whole section here. Like, you can just take as long as you need to. It's the same process over and over. You're just adding different colors in different um, ways, okay? Or in different you know, areas. Um, Howdy from Texas. Hello. So excited to be drawing this. Or painting. Yes. Um, will you be posting this on YouTube? It automatically uh, posts to YouTube. Um is it a thicker paint best? Yes, thicker paint, full body paint is better. It usually comes in the tubes. Um, if it comes in a bottle, um, it might not be as the thick as you need it. Um, I know that a lot of people have tried to do um, um, the like the craft paint acrylics for um, with a palette knife, and for some paintings that looks it's fine. But for something like this where it ha it does have, it's got a lot of pop-out texture, not just a lot of like a cross texture, um, you will need the thicker paint. So if you don't have the thicker paint, um, you can still try it. Feel free to try it. Uh, maybe not upright, maybe have it flat um, on the table and that'll help it kind of not fall down. Um, but honestly, I might just hold off and wait and then you can paint it once you get some thicker paint. Um, is there a trick to make thinner paint thicker so we can use it? You'd have to have a thickening agent. Um, I don't exactly know, remember what it's called. Uh, maybe somebody in the comments can help me. Um, but there are, there are materials that you can use to thicken the paint, but if you don't already have that, it might not help you right now. Um, so you might have to either go for it 
or you'll have to paint it a little bit later. Yes, the thick paint gives it depth. So essentially, you can do this without having thick paint. It just won't, it'll just be a lot different. Um, so like here, it's like, there's just so much texture with this. Like, see if I can, like it's just, like it's popping out. You see that, all the texture? Um, it's so fun, my goodness. Um, but yeah, so that's with the thick pigment. Um, how long does it take to dry fully? Um, I don't know. I left it on my cam on my easel for a couple days. Um, acrylic paint tends to dry fairly quick um, because it is a little bit thicker. You might have um, you might have you know a little bit longer to wait, but I would give it at least a day just to make sure um, before like, you know, kids go touching it or anything like that. Um, but it's, I mean, if you've left paint in a, in a palette overnight, it's like pretty much dry by the, by the next morning, you know? Um, so, um, I can see the dimension. Yeah. So much dimension. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do announcements real quick. I just, I think the only announcement that I have um, is obviously the painting. What? I don't know where I put it. Um, I had it here earlier. Yeah, so first announcement is just the um, my next class, which is going to be the, um, you know, the May the 4th be with you. Um, that class and I do have a traceable available on my patreon for anyone wanting that or to feel like they need that um, And then otherwise the second announcement is I just have a patreon giveaway. So this week I am giving away To my patreons this acrylic paint It is uh, 12 colors I believe so I'm gonna give that just as a thank you to my patrons for supporting me um, and things like that. So let me go ahead and draw a name real fast. And it is Teresa, Teresa Alvarado. So I will go ahead and um, message you after um, and just let you know that it's on the way. And congratulations on that, you've won. Okay, so that's just a thank you to my patrons. So thank you for all everyone who supports me over there. And um, let's go ahead and get into the class. Um, let's see, Jody asks, a thin paint, you must use a light touch so your balloons don't blend. Touch, don't swipe. Yes, that is a very, very good, um, a good tip. So thank you, Jody, for um, letting us know that. Um... Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera over to my palette so you can see me, or so you can not see me and see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and switch that camera. Doopa doo. All right, let that adjust. You can see me now. Let's see. Seems like it's little over okay there we go hello all right so now I'm gonna be focused more here so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my blue and my white oh I forgot about my white we do have white and black in this um, I forgot to mention that in the supplies um, when I was talking about it earlier but we do have black and white just your standard black and white um, so we're gonna go ahead and put some white on here and then whatever blue that you're using for your sky. Um, I re would recommend a lighter blue so that, all that your so that all of your colors will pop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this blue. I will be using this blue for the rest of my colors as well. So I'm just gonna plop down a big thing on there 
and we'll go from there. Um, it does look rather dark on here. It is a light blue, as I stated before. Um, this is what the blue is. Um, so just know that everything on the on the palette is just slightly um, a darker. If you want me to lighten it up, just let me know, and I can I can do that. Um, actually, let me just do that real quick, just so that it's a little bit more. Okay, that's better. It's a little bit more true to the color. Okay, so we're gonna grab our filbert. If you do not have a filbert brush, um, you can use just any flat brush that you have. Let's say the largest flat brush. Um, and we're just going to go pretty much over the entire thing with the exception of maybe the bottom. We're going to transition to our white and then we're going to add our fluffy top on the, the tops. Um, I will say that if you, um, I said this before, but if you don't have a long canvas and you have like a square canvas, you'll just have to kind of adjust, maybe make the whole thing smaller a little bit um, or just move down your... Um, move down your clouds, okay? All right, I'm gonna dip this in the water and grab some of this blue. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna go. I'm gonna start at the corner. And I'm gonna start with the top, making sure that I get that top, that all of the corners and all of the tops, bottoms and sides are also um, are also painted. Now theoretically if you had some tape or you have kids um, that you don't want to worry about the you know the sides of the canvas um, I would just use some tape and then you won't have to worry about it. I'm gonna get some white here and just mix that in kind of lighten it up The screen I'm painting on is tiny. For me, it's taking up half the page. I'm not sure what you're talking about. If you're on mobile, I would highly suggest um, going to a desktop where you can um, you can have it on a bigger screen or cast it to your TV. So I'm just using my blue and my white. I'm going all the way across. If you want texture in your sky, you can leave some of these like markings here. That's kind of what I did at the first one. Or if you want it very smooth, after you're done putting on the, the paint, you'll go all the way across and smooth it out. Either way works and I think both look completely fine. Um, if you leave kind of the, the white streaks in the middle, it kind of looks like there's maybe some clouds in the far off distance, which could be nice. So it's really, it's really up to you. So whenever I'm mixing my paint, on the canvas, especially with two different colors, I kind of go in an X motion, like a really quick X motion. And if I'm planning on, you know, um, mixing it all in the end, like going all the way across, I don't really, I don't really care about those, you know, extra brushes, brush marks, because I know they're eventually going to be um, taken out when I go over it. And then another trick, sometimes the paint is being, um, sometimes the paint can be a little stubborn and won't get into like all of those little pieces. So sometimes if you go the opposite direction and you go against the grain 
of you know when you, where you would normally go with your brush and you go up and kind of wiggle your brush that can get the paint in all those little crevices and sometimes that helps here I'm just doing the side I don't know about you but I always forget the side that's like not closest to me I don't know if it's like out of sight out of mind or what but I tend to always forget about it so I'm surprised that I'm remembering now <laughs> So as I'm painting, I'm just slightly putting more and more white in my um, in my mixture. You can see now that I'm just kind of mixing my blue and um, my white together a little bit in this like middle area. Let me tell you, it's so nice that you guys can see what I'm doing on my palette. I don't have to like keep like you know showing you. I'm just kind of mixing it on the on the palette before I put it on now, just so it's a little bit lighter. And you can even start to put in some of your some of your clouds now by just roughly putting that white there and it's going to blend into the blue and they're going to be very very subtle clouds. You see that? Just very very subtly. See how there's already a cloud line? The only thing I did was I took my pure white and I pushed it up into like the blue area. And all of a sudden there's like distant clouds. Um, so at this point I'm going to go into just a lot of my white. It still has blue in it and that's totally fine. I kind of, I want that light blue in there. So that I have something to work with. Um, in terms of darkness because if you can't have the light without the dark so if there's no dark blue in here then you can't have those bright highlights of that white so I'm still gonna have blue in here I ran out of white so let me go ahead and grab more of that a little bit more into my water If any of you have any questions throughout this process, please just let me know. Um, just po pop a question in the comments. Um, um, I look every so often, so hopefully I'll get to it um, when you need me to. So I'm just going to put you know, some of this color all the way down. This white, whitish blue. Making sure to go all the way off the canvas. Now I'm going to go over here. Um, I am using a filbert brush. Um, and for me in this specific kit it is a size 15 so um, I always like to say that <laughs> that brushes are like women's jeans it's 
it varies from store to store. <laughs> it varies from um, brand to brand. Um, so a size 15 in this kit might be a super small one in your kit. Um, so just, just whatever large size. I just have a large size um, filbert brush. Now I'm just getting the bottom here. Yeah, of course. Up the whole bottom. All right, so now already, since we kind of did that a little bit, we already kind of have this um, this line of clouds, um, which we will be we'll be expanding. Um, so once you are done with this kind, this layer of the cloud and the bottom here, whether or not you did the clouds or not, that's totally fine. Um, go ahead and let me know so we can kind of move forward a little bit. I think I want to, I'm going to add just a little bit of darkness over here. Go ahead and just give me a thumbs up when you're at a place that's, you know, you're close to where I'm at. And I'll kind of give you the next steps. Essentially what we're going to be doing is grabbing just our pure white and making some fluffy clouds. I struggle with clouds. I can't wait to try your method. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So this is a really easy way to get some just far off distance clouds, having things blended pretty well. Anything that's blended um, is going to look for fuzzy and further away. Um, so once this dries a little bit, we're going to be adding some more vibrant clouds that look a little bit closer. Um, does the paint have to be wet for the cloud line or do you, can you still do, uh, when the blue is already dry? Uh, either way. So I wanted to show this way because it wasn't something that I've done before, um, in a class. So this is a really easy way to do something that like far off clouds. Um, we're going to do some fluffy clouds that are closer, um, which is mainly what I did in the, um, in the original. I had these, um, just the big kind of fluffy clouds. Um, and we'll be doing those first by just simply watering down. Um, and it, it was dry. This part was dry. I mean, it's dry right now. So <laughs> we got to go with the flow. Um, but when I originally did it, it was dry. So you just kind of water down your white. You get some uh, kind of blended uh, clouds that look a little bit further in the distance. But they still have a distinct shape. Um, and then you have a little bit more... Um, fluffier clouds in, in the front with a little bit more distinct shape. So essentially if you want something that's far off like this you would do it when it's wet because it can all blend in. If you want something that's close and more distinct shape um, and things like that, um, kind of like what we're going to be doing now, um, you'll do this method that we're doing now. Uh, my clouds are looking a little weird. Well I can't see your clouds so I don't know if I could help you. Um, how, how, how do they look weird? What, what looks weird about them? Maybe I can still help. 
I'll answer this question and then we'll um, we'll get to the second round of clouds. Um, they look like drips. Mm. Like straight lines. I would say just make sure to blend them out. We are going to be going over. You can cover all this up if you wanted to. Um, so if you have any clouds that you don't necessarily like, you can always cover up with, you know, more clouds. Okay, so I've had a couple um, thumbs up, so we're going to go ahead and move on. So now I've rinsed out my brush. I don't have any blue on it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just my pure white and some water. So in a new section on my palette, I'm getting some white and water. So now I can go here. And this is where it helps to have the round, the round tip of the, um, whatchamacallit? The round tip of the filbert is really helpful. Um, you're just going to create some, a little bit more translucent clouds. So I'm doing what I, essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing whatever top I want, the top of the cloud, and then I'm bringing down whatever paint I have left and blending it into the bottom. And you can add these wherever you want. What I would say is try to be random with it. Clouds don't have specific distinct shapes. Um, like they always look like this. Like they always look like this. That's not how clouds work. Um, they're always kind of random and um, have different shapes to them. So yeah. And with the little bit amount of white, you might not think that I have any white on here, but I just made this very, very distinct, distant um, cloud with what I have on here. So you can make you can make clouds in the very far distance by having barely any paint on your brush. See how it's just creating layers and layers and layers and looks like the clouds just like keep going. So then what you can do is you can go into your pure white and you can make some clouds that are really, really close. By doing the same thing, you can have a little bit of water, but not too much water. You still want them to be opaque. And you can just, again, I'm just working with the outer edge of the, um, whatchamacallit, of the clouds. And then I'm just pulling down, I'm just kind of blending that in, blending it down. I got a, like a tiny bit of water and I'm just kind of blending down the excess paint. Um, can, I sh can I show which side of the filbert brush? I'm using the flat sides, so I'm using both sides. A little bit, 
of water like these. The, the trick here, I think, at least for me, is to not have it all completely white. So what I said before is you can't have the light without the dark, right? So this up here is brighter and white, but then it goes to blue, and then that's where I've chosen to put a pure white one, okay? So there's a lot of white right here, so I might not choose to put a pure white one right there because it might not have enough distinguish. I mean, I could because I know it's a little bit, it is a little bit blue, so I, I do know that. But in your painting, just try to figure out where the best place would be to put your clouds so that they kind of stand out. Stand out. Dun, dun. Oh my gosh, that song is so old. <laughs> is that a Goofy song? Did I just sing Goofy in the middle of my live stream? Uh, for anyone who didn't know, I was a theater major. So sometimes, sometimes that happens. Um, so yeah, so you're just going to keep adding ho however many layers of clouds you want. Like you can really go crazy on this. And you can all different opacities. So going, you know, adding just the pure white does add that element. And then you can always go back in with just your low opacity, which is adding more water to it. And add a couple little things here. Blending that down. Alright, so at this point, I'm going to choose where my light source is. Now theoretically, I should have chosen this beforehand, but I kind of just let the painting go. So if you're looking at my painting, which side does it look like the sun is coming from? I'll give you a hint. Look at this cloud. It looks like it's coming from this way, right? Because the light source is on the left side of this cloud. So it gives that illusion. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our white. Now, depending on which cloud you're doing, you might water it down. I'm gonna do it on these clouds, which are already very white. And I'm just going to dab using my filbert the left side of a lot of these clouds. And you're going to bring to life some of the shapes that weren't there before. And all of a sudden, you have a light source and clouds that are just popping out of nowhere. You don't have to add them to all of them. Maybe just the tips of some. And I, and I just ever so slightly brush down when I, when I add these. So I just add, wherever I'm going to add it, I add it and then I just slightly brush down. Just so that it blends in ever so much. <clears throat> so the first time I did this um, over there, I didn't do this. I didn't spend very much time on... I, I probably painted this thing in like 30 minutes, but because we're doing clouds, I thought I might take a little bit of extra time just to show you some different ways of doing some clouds. I know I've done 
stuff like this in the past where I've done some clouds, um, but not everybody watches every, you know, every class I do. Um, so sometimes it's fun to revisit some of these um, techniques. So again, you can go crazy with this. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of opacity, um, a little bit less opacity to some of this so that I can do some of these in the back. And again, I'm just kind of, I'm rubbing out with my finger, I'm brushing down a little bit just so it's not, I don't want to bring too much attention to the ones in the back because they are further out in the distance, but they're still going to have highlight on the same side. And you are going to see that from a distance. So you might as well add, just make sure that you do add water to it because the ones in the back are not going to be as bright as the ones that are right near you. Everything in the back is going to be a little bit uh, just blurrier and less colored. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I don't want to overdo it. Like, I don't know if you could overdo it, but I feel like I've I've done a good job of covering all my bases. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. I don't want to get rid of all of the wispiness, because I kind of like the, the really faded wispiness of the ones in the back. Um, so I'm going to keep them like that. So there's that for the kind of extended uh, <laughs> extended um, cloud tutorial, if I might say. And if you are doing your clouds, don't forget to have them go over the edge. Carry that over um, to the edge. Just so that it's cohesive with it all. It's a little, it's a little, uh, tip. Just so that when you hang it on the wall, it's not like, oh, you forgot to paint the clouds on, on the sides. And honestly, that's all for the background. Like, we're done with the background. Now we have an hour and ten minutes <laughs> to finish the rest of it. Which, this can either take long or very short time, amount of time, depending on how comfortable you are with a palette knife, but I will explain as much as I can um, how to use this palette knife so that it is the easiest possible for you guys. Um, yeah, so let is, let's let's see. I want to go ahead and add the rest of my colors to my palette. Um, if you are mixing your colors, it is better to over mix because this is all going to be the same color of balloon or whatever it's going to be better to over mix the amount that you're going to need rather than to under mix and have to try to remix it to make the same exact color if you are using um, two paints like I am I can always add more of the color as I need it as necessary and I don't necessarily need to add a ton of paint to my palette because I can just add more whenever I need it, and I don't want to waste paint. Um, but if you are if you are pre-mixing one of your colors, try to add a lot, like try to mix a lot of it, because this this is going to be using a lot of paint. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna add all my colors. I've never used a palette knife, excited to try it tonight. Awesome! I honestly think that this is one of the better ones to try it out on because it's a very simple concept and I feel like there's not a whole lot of ways to, I don't know, mess it up in a sense. Um, it's really just, again, it's just the process and there, there might definitely be a, like a learning curve for it, but don't get discouraged and just keep trying. If you want to, 
If you want to try the technique out on your palette first, um, or on a paper towel or a piece of paper first, um, feel free to do that to try to get um, try to get some of the how to do it a little bit um, better, just so that it's easier when you start trying on the canvas. But honestly, it's I think you guys will be fine. Alright, so I am going to have to mix my purple, so I'll be doing that while you all are finishing up your clouds, because I could literally spend all day on the clouds, but... Um, is it okay to use a very small spoon? That's all I have. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that I suggested. So if you have like a baby spoon, or like a tiny spoon, I also suggested even using your finger if you wanted to, like your pinky. Um, I might, if I was using that, I would cut my nail off because um, I have long nails right now, um, but yeah, any, you could use, I think a spoon would be good because if it is small enough, then it would be curved and would actually give you a really nice balloon, if that makes sense. Um, and then I have purple, which... I'm going to be mixing, I'm just going to be mixing white with it, so I don't necessarily need to, um, because I'm only mixing white with it, I don't need to mix a whole lot of it, like I suggested earlier to you guys, because there's really only, like, one tone that it can go, either lighter or darker, versus if you're mixing two colors of paint together, um, or even three colors to paint together to get a certain color, like, it's going to be a lot harder to get that same color. But I have a pretty good amount here. I just need to, oh, I'm going to mix with my palette knife. Um, yeah, a little trick. If you've never mixed with a palette knife, now, if you're using a, a palette that has, like, pots in it, it's, like, almost impossible. But if you have a flat palette like this... Um, try mixing your paint with a palette knife. It's very effective. I think I want to go lighter. I like this purple. The main thing that I was trying to do was make sure that it's not the same color as my dark blue because <laughs> it's pretty dark. And I might even I might even lighten that up too. take the rest of this white. I'm going to lighten up my dark blue just the tiniest bit.
Okay. I like that blue better, but now it's a little bit too close to this blue. So now I think I might make that blue darker. I mean lighter. <laughs> I do need more of this blue anyways. Is anybody else mixing their colors? Or are y'all using tube colors? Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need more paint than this, but I think for right now it's okay and we can get to the technique. Okay, so give me a thumbs up if you're ready to start on the house. Um, I do need to get my red out here, which I forgot. I have like barely any red, so I hope I have enough for this class. That is like all of the red that's in there. Hopefully that'll be enough. I think it'll be enough, but we will find out soon. Okay, I'm gonna leave this red out so I don't forget that I need to get my other tube. Okay, uh, let's see. We have all of our colors. I'm gonna grab a little bit more white because we are going to draw a very, very light outline just the slightest outline so that we know where everything is going. So let's go ahead and grab our very, very small, um, a very small brush. We're just going to, we're going to draw in the, whatchamacallit, the house. Okay. Now, before I had left a space here for the house, but it's okay. Um, I'm just going to draw it over this because I do want the rest of this to be the balloons. Um, and my house is kind of going to be over the clouds. So I'm going to grab some water. Just a little bit of this white. Very, very, very faint. Just so that you can see it. And you want it a little bit at an angle. Okay, so first we're going to put the house. I'm just going to put a little dot. That's where my house is. Just for me to know that that's where my house is. My house is going to be right there. And then, um, let's see. Here's the top of the house. So I put two little dots. It's about the shape, the top, and the bottom. I have it right here. I'm going to skip about an inch and put another dot and that's going to be the start of like where the balloons are so I'm going to do kind of I'm going to go a line this is the line of the balloons okay and we're going to come around here and just very gently put almost like it's almost like drawing a very big balloon Like that. So I just have these basic curving lines. Now I would say go go skinnier than you think so that you don't have lines. You can see up here on my first one my lines because I didn't I didn't go all the way over them. That was my mistake. Um, but so just make sure that when you are drawing these, maybe draw them a little bit thinner than you're actually gonna go so that you don't have you don't see these lines. And then I'm going to go back down to the here. Essentially, you're going to make a box. 
a little house. Make it smaller than you think you want it. You can always make it bigger. But we've done so much work on these clouds. <laughs> we don't want to have to redo anything. This little house. Make mine a little bit wider. Wide. Or not white. -er. And then a little roof. I'm making mine slightly darker than I would so that you guys can see it a little bit better. You have a little bit of a roof. And if you want to look up a picture of like the house so you can like go buy it exactly, that's cool too. It's got kind of like this front section that comes out. And then there's like a door right here. But we can put all that detail in later. We're just kind of sketching in the, the basics. Alright. Now the first thing we're going to do is if you have a liner brush, you will get that one out wherever I put it. There it is. And you're going to get your white. It's a lot easier to put these in beforehand. Um, this is from the movie Up. We are being inspired by the movie Up. So I'm just loading my brush and I'm just going to do a lot of little tiny lines going it'll be going from about the middle where the roof where the um, chimney is that's where the chimney is coming out is from relatively the middle of it that's where all of these are going to come out of so I'm just going to do a bunch of tiny little lines flicking it up and making sure to go all the way into this little section that we created Oh, it's kind of hard to see. That's what it looks like. Technically, I think I can, I don't know. It goes here. Haha. -ha. I'm fancy. <laughs> For anyone that, um, let me know if you, if you've been painting with me from the beginning. When I was using, um, I was using this camera that you're seeing my palette from, and I would literally, I would literally hold my camera in my other hand while trying to paint in one hand, and it was, it was chaotic. Let me know if you've been here from the beginning. That's kind of a fun thing to know. Um, so obviously it's going to be more congested near the middle, but you still want to have like some lines that are broken in terms of like, it's not just one big white blob. Which is why I really recommend having a liner brush. If you don't have a liner brush, you might not be able to get this amount of detail which is totally fine. You will still get, you know, you will still get the point across. But that's, that is the, you know, that section. Alright, I'm going to put this back. So there's that. And then now we can actually get to our palette knife. So let me know when you're done with this section. And we can move on to the palette knives. Because um, this, this section will literally take you as long as you want it to. You can be very careful or you can go super quick. Um, so it's really up to you.
seeing some thumbs up. Great. Okay. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get to what we've all been waiting for. <coughs> so for this, I'm going to be using the standard size palette knife. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So essentially what you're going to do. So with this technique, I'm going to be putting on maybe four to five balloons at a time with the same color. Then I'm going to wipe off all the color that I have here. So try to use all that color on there um, and then get a different color. The trick with this is changing, is wiping off the back of it before switching colors. Because if you don't, it will get muddy. Um, you can see a little bit of that near the top. I wasn't doing that. I didn't do that with some of the yellow because I had green. I was like, oh, it's, you know, close enough. Um, but the colors ended up getting kind of muddy at the top, which I ended up having to go back in and kind of take that color out and redo that balloon. So when you're doing this technique, do four or five balloons, depending on, uh, I'll show you kind of the, the flow of it. You're going to wipe it off. Get as much paint off as you can and then grab a new color. Do a couple more balloons, wipe it off, grab a new color. So it's going to be that the whole way through. Now how you do this is, let's see, what color should I start? I'm going to start with the blue. And that's already got the white in there. Didn't mix that in very well. Okay, so you're going to grab some blue. Okay, this is how I have it on my... Um, I have a fairly thick amount of this on here and I'm going to at the top place it pull it down that's one balloon now if you wanted it to be bigger you could press a little bit harder and you could drag it if you wanted to it's all up to you um, now when I'm gonna add so I'm gonna go back in with this blue you go back in for each balloon. So it's a very, uh, red red what is it, redundant, redundant process um, of going back in for each balloon, but it definitely goes by fast once you get the hang of it. Go back in. And the less paint you grab, the, um, the uh, smaller the balloon is. So I'm just going to do a couple at first because I need to fill in the rest of this with some other colors. But that is what the first layer looks like. Now I'm just going to do a couple on the top so that it's not like balloons and then not balloons. So now that I have this, okay, I still have some of this color on here. I'm going to press it down to get as much color back. I'm going to, I don't, because I don't want to waste all that color. I put as much color color back into the blue as possible, then I can wipe off the edge. Okay? So then you're going to go in with your different color. Um, so if I'm adding colors, I'm going to try to use colors that aren't directly close to it on the color wheel. Like, that might happen, um, but at least for, you know, starting out where I can have, a, like, I might go to the red. I'm gonna go on top here, put a red right there. And this part will get, you know, this part was gonna get, um, you know, covered up. So don't worry about your bottoms. And get a little bit more red, go over here. And you're gonna try, try, for this beginning part, it's kind of weird because you don't have all the colors on there, but Try to um, keep all your colors separate, especially on your palette. So, for instance, I had um, a little bit of blue in here, and I just took it out and wiped it off because apparently I still had I had because I got I grabbed blue from the from the the painting. And I didn't want that to go into my red because then I would grab that next time and then I'd have a red blue 
um, balloon. Um, but for this, you're going to want to try, it's kind of weird right now, but you're going to want to try to start from the top down. Um, cause now you can see my line right here. Oops. You can see my line right here. And now I have to go put a balloon on the other side of it, which is a little bit more difficult. Um, so try, try, let's see. Uh, that works. Just a little, little sloppy. So now that I'm in the green, I'm going to go ahead and do all the green. And once you get the, the hang of this, it goes so fast. Get rid of some of that yellow, wipe it off. And I have I have a double paper towel here so that if I need to get the top of it off, I can put it in here and get rid of it. Put it in here. So then for here, every time you go over, over like a balloon, you're going to go slightly over the bottom. Um, my paint is much thinner than yours. Do you think it would help to mix with the paste so you can get a structure to acrylics? Is the paste that you're talking about specifically to thicken, is it a thickening agent for acrylics? Because if so, then yes. Um, if not, then I'm not sure what paste you're talking about. Um, but if it's a thickening agent, then I would absolutely suggest using it. Once you get to the point where the only, you know, this is all filled in and you're just kind of going across, it gets a lot easier. Um, but right now it's just kind of, it's a little bit awkward because... I haven't filled in all of these gaps. just get the top here. I'm gonna go pretty quick right now just so I can get the top of this finished. So at this point right here, I'm just looking at like, okay, what's missing from this section? You kind of always want to ask yourself that when you're choosing another color. Like, okay, what color is missing? Um, I have to go, but I will watch it later. Okay, bye Micah. Um, no, it's a thickening agent. Oh, it's not a thickening agent. It's to get structure on the canvas. Um... 
I mean... I don't see why you couldn't try it. If it's if it's made to work with acrylics, um, you could definitely try it. Um, I follow somebody on Instagram that mixes their um, acrylic paints with like a super thick, like it's, it almost looks like a modeling paste, but like it's like paste. And she does these like floral things, um, and it stays that thick. It's like like giant petals, and it stays that thick. Um, so. I don't see why you couldn't try. Why not? I mean, we're experimenting, aren't we? Yeah, then I would go for it. It'll probably make it a little bit, have a little bit more of like a grainyish effect, I'm guessing. Um, but I don't, I wouldn't mind that. I think part of this is to you know get the texture that's one of the reasons why we're doing it this way is to have that pop out texture so if that's what it's going to do I don't see I don't see any problem or reason why you wouldn't or shouldn't all right so you see at this point I'm just going swooping with different colors I am trying to cover up all of the blue sky behind it so that's the only thing that I would say to try and accomplish with your colors is to try to cover up the sky and try not to put the same color next to each other I definitely did that a couple times which it looks fine but you know, if you can try to avoid it. Yeah, I mean, sounds great. If any, if any time you should be experimenting, why not now? Especially with something that's kind of a little bit more abstract anyways. Might as well. Guys, look how cute this is already. I can't, I can't. It's so, it's so cute. Okay, what color do I need? Mm, light blue. Um, one of the reasons I like having the sky color as the background is that, or as a balloon as well, is that if you do see the, you know, the, the background within the, within, like in between the colors, it's not like as noticeable because there are that color of balloons so it's like not as noticeable in my opinion um also one thing to note try not to make your line or whatever the line where your balloons are perfectly like straight like have ones like poking out and stuff like that and at the end we can add a couple strays that either have a longer you know have a longer line or maybe they're float aways or whatever um but yeah I'll do some purple oh i'm missing pink i haven't done pink in a while
So you want to get going, it's a pretty fast process. Mm. If you're happy painting, I really have to go. Yes. Go sleep. We'll be here when you wake up and you can paint with us then. Be here in spirit. Um, something I forgot to mention when you are doing this, try not to scrape, try not to scrape um, and put too much pressure so that you see the canvas behind you. Try to still have like each balloon still be the color that it's intended to be. Um, <laughs> anybody see my, my, um, my paper towel? It also looks like a bunch of balloons because <laughs> I've been wiping off the excess. Okay. I need some orange. I haven't done orange in a while. I wish I had, I wish I could play like music on the stream. At least you can. You guys can listen to music. I can't listen to music. <laughs> but yeah, so that, I mean, it's just the same process over and over. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I'll be here. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty easy process. It is very satisfying. And once you get the hang of it, it goes fast and it's just, I don't know, for me it's super relaxing. I don't know if it's the same for y'all. Now something like this, I'm looking at this and I can tell that there's like no balloon, no yellow balloons in this area. I can take a little piece of my yellow and put a couple dots in here so that it's not like void of the yellow. Rachel, I believe YouTube lets you go back. So if you would like to rewind it, it won't necessarily be live for you. Um, 
even even though we're still live, it'll it'll be like the replay. Um, but if you want to start it back, you can. Essentially, we just did a background, we did the clouds, and now we're we're doing the technique with the balloons. Yes, all my live classes um, have a replay, and it's this class. Balloons are so fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. They are fun. Was I was I wrong to say that they're pretty easy? I'm hoping that everybody got the hang of it by now and have been able to get some pretty good balloons out there. Honestly, like even if like one balloon is like, man, that doesn't look like a balloon in retrospect of the entire painting, it's all going to come together. I don't have a palette knife. I wonder if I could use a metal butter spreader thing instead. It's sort of like a similar shape to a palette knife. I've I've seen people use the the butter spreader. It's it's not like a butter knife, but it's like a it's I mean it's what you said, it's a butter spreader. Um yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't try. Um, I think I had too much paint as they are kind of merging. Are you talking about on the palette there, like the colors are mixing? Um, it might be because you're putting them too close to each other. Um, so notice most of the paint that I have is kind of on the top of it. And then I, I push down and it kind of spreads out. So I know that I can put a balloon that's like, like right here. Versus if I try to put a balloon that's like on top of this red one, it would definitely spread, it would definitely mix into the red. So kind of try to play around with the space, the spacing that you have, and like put it at the edge of the balloon versus like on top of the balloon. If that, or like put it next to it versus like on top of the other balloons. I hope that makes sense. Is anybody done with their balloons yet? Am I like super slow? Or are people still still going still going strong? Cuz I can give I can um teach some tips on what to do next if you're done.
Lots to go, okay. And just to note, try to always pull down towards um, the center. It's kind of a thing that matters more when you get down to the bottom side. Because that's where the balloons are, are coming from. Oops, see I had blue in that one. I'm almost, okay. Just kind of gauging where people are at. <laughs> Not even halfway. Yeah. It's an easy, repetitive process, but it does take a while. It also depends on how how many balloons you have or like how much space you have to fill so this time around I feel like I have a lot more space to fill than I did with my first one just because of the shape and everything let's see I need pink Done. If you're done with this section, you can start adding on your strays. I would suggest adding on a color that's like not right next to it. So like, for instance, I noticed I didn't have a lot of a lot of um, orange right here. So I added an orange one or something that's going to stand out like a yellow um, or a pink. Like I don't have a lot of pink over here. So I'm just going to add a little pink one that's kind of popping out there. Okay. So you can add a couple ones that are popping out and um, maybe they're flyaways or maybe they just have a longer, um, a longer line. When you get down to the the end, it's like you do a couple in each color and then you're done, you gotta switch a color. It's like harder to tell which colors you don't have.
Um, I'm running out of paint, so I need to refill as I'm not halfway done. Yeah, it does take a lot of paint, doesn't it? I'm actually surprised that I thought I was going to use a lot more paint than I did. Um, as you can see, um, I, I thought for sure I was going to run out of red, <laughs> but I didn't, ironically. Um, which I guess is a good thing because that was the color that I was pretty much out of. Which, though I'm kind of sad because I wasted some of the paint. Um, because I'm not going to use all that. What colors do I need? I feel like I'm missing green. I'm going to put a little red one right here. Alright, so I'm pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and add my other balloons out here. And you can add them in little clusters if you want. So say like I have this little pink one. I'm going to add a little purple one right next to it. Maybe another purple one down here. We'll add a yellow one popping out. And then I'm just going to make it so that this isn't such a straight line. That's pretty much it for the actual balloons. Um, we have about 20 minutes left, so um, while I know everybody still has a wave to go, we're gonna go ahead and switch gears and do the house. You can always come back to the balloons um, and finish on your own time for sure, because I know that it does take a little bit of extra time depending on um, how big your space is and how many balloons you're doing. Um, on the first one, my canvas was a little bit smaller and I was doing bigger balloons, so it ended up not taking as much time. This time I decided to do smaller balloons and I had more to do, so it took a little bit longer. Um, with that said, um, we're going to go ahead and switch gears and do the house real fast. So go ahead and grab your small brush. We're first going to paint um, the house yellow because the house is yellow um, now the first time I did this I did it um, with my palette knife brush which if you are looking for ways to explore that you can definitely um, still do that but just for 
I don't know, everybody else's sanity. <laughs> you can use a brush if you want. Um, if you want more like abstracty, I would definitely suggest doing the, um, that's what I used the small one with. I added some of the details with the, um, with the palette knife. Um, so it's definitely something that you can do. I just filled that in. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a little bit of this palette knife just to get some of the texture. It's kind of coming out green because I had green. I had green in my yellow, so I'm gonna get some new yellow to do this with. Again, if you want to use a brush, you are totally free to use a brush. Okay, so then we're going to make a slightly brown color. So you can do this um, by adding, if you have a purple, you can add that to your yellow. Um, or you can do your your blue and your orange, or your red and your green. Whatever color combination, essentially whatever's opposite from the cover wheel that you would like to do. Um, so it's complementary color. So yellow and purple, orange and blue, um, or red and green. Alright, so this is the color that I have. It's kind of far away. It's this color down here. I am going to lighten it up with some white real quick because I don't want it that dark. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just seeing this. Um, I got some green paint on my white clouds. What should I do? Um, if, it, if, it's, if you just did it, I'm sorry I didn't see this before. If you just did it, then you can take a clean brush with a little bit of water and try to scrub it off a little bit. Otherwise, make a new cloud. Cover it up. Um, I would say put white only on that section, and then you can, once it's dry, um, you can add white kind of around it and make, make a cloud around it. Or if it's in the right spot, then you can make a balloon. Um, but considering you said clouds, I'm assuming it's down low. Um, the other option is, I didn't put it in my first one, but you could put birds. Um, you could put birds in this one. So with this brown, I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of white to lighten it up so it's not so dark. So it's more of like a sandy colored brownish. It's just like a light colored brown. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't see it um, until now. So I have this little tiny bit of brown. I'm just going to put this on where the roof is. And it's kind of two sections to the roof. There's like this bottom section that goes from here to there and then this part comes up. Again, feel free to look up a picture if you want to be more specific but honestly everybody will know what everybody will know what you're painting
I should say everybody who's a fan will know what you're painting. I'm just going to add the texture part of it. Because I kind of I kind of like having that element. There's that. Um, this is the only part that you'll have black in this entire class. And it's like the tiniest bit of black. Like I don't even know if I need to put it on my palette. Like I could just take it right out of the tube. Um, but essentially it's just to give some shadow, like right here, and right here a little bit, um, I really enjoy your painting tutorial, you set up the views really well, uh, one of my favorite painting tutorials ever, thank you, thank you so much for the compliment. I set up the views, you mean I set up the viewers really well? Just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, make sure that if you like this video, um, give it a thumbs up. Um, as well as if you would like to tip for tonight, um, you can either head on over to my Patreon or I have um, information down below. If you would like to give a tip, um, I would greatly appreciate it. But obviously, this is a free class. It's completely optional. Um, you don't have to at all. But I always appreciate it. And um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead. Um, I think the door was red. Which is why I painted it red. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just. A little chunk. Of red. It's kind of like a reddish orange. Just kind of just gesture it on there and then there is like some white fencing so what I did is I got some white and I very lightly just kind of put on some white I left it kind of chunky and then there's like a window here and some windows over here and I just left it um, to be kind of a little bit abstract and I felt that to be the best remember that your light source is coming over here um, from the left side at least for me or just remember where your light source is so if there's going to be any sort of um, highlights and things like that keep that in mind and then lastly we have the um, oh before I put, before you put in the um, chimney, if you have any other strands that you feel like you need to put in, uh, for instance, uh, where's my, where's my liner? Here's my liner brush. Um, like I have one, um, I missed it, what was black? Oh, I just had, I had a little, a few pieces, um, here, let me show you. There's just a few pieces here. It's kind of hard to tell, um, but pieces that I um, added, like some dark. I feel like I should add more, actually. So there's like darkness under here. It's just to give it like some dimension. But honestly, it's like, I feel like you don't have to. It's all kind of abstract, so it's just, yeah. And the highlights that you're seeing on the original 
um, are honestly the tech, the light is like the texture that's ref it's reflecting off the texture. So like the lighting that you see on the actual roof isn't necessarily there. It's just, that's just the texture that you're seeing the light reflect off of. So yeah, hope that makes sense. Um, back into the chimney. Before you put the chimney, I'm going to make this door a little bigger. Um, before you put the chimney, put in any last minute, um, lines that you feel like you need to put. Um, for instance, I'm going to grab some of this white, get my water, get it loaded. Round brushes, you always... Um, if you want all the bristles to stay together, you'll roll it on the way off of the palette, and that's how you load it. Just roll it a couple times until you feel like you got enough. And there's a couple that are kind of spewing out here, so I'm just going to gently have a couple coming out. And then I can also pull these in. and give these some white. Alright, so once you're done with that, then you can put in your, your little red, um, whatchamacallit, chimney. Just like that. And there you go. You have your house. So then the last thing that you can do, which you can add or you don't have to, um, is the saying adventure is out there. Um, you can look up a font if you're not comfortable doing your own font. Um, you can copy my font that I kind of just did. It's a little bit of cursive-y um, stuff. Um, honestly, you can do whatever you want. Um, I would just make sure that, you know, it stays on the page. Um, so let's try to just be careful. Um, and if you're not good with the brush, I used the brush and white paint originally. Um, I'm fairly comfortable with a brush and writing script. But if you're not, um, you can always get a different, you can get like a different medium or a paintbrush uh, or like a paint marker or anything like that would probably be fine too. Um, but just use whatever you're comfortable with and go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to try to make it, you know, flat. But
You're welcome. Yeah, at this point you can you can go back to your um you can go back to your balloons if you still need to work on your balloons. Um or you can if you're done, that's totally fine too. Thank you for joining me. I'm just gonna finish up these letters and then I will be all done. Adventure, make sure you're spelling everything right. I feel like for some of this, I need to use my liner brush. You're so welcome. Yeah, goodbye to everyone who is finishing up and leaving us. Thank you so much for sticking around and painting with me. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you haven't yet, um, go over to, to um, my Facebook uh, group and you can share all your paintings with me. I would love to see them and I'm sure everybody else would love to see them. Um, and I look forward to, um, seeing you guys in another class. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish my, um, writing, write my signature, and I will see you guys all in the next class. I hope you have a wonderful night and we'll see you soon. Bye.